Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at volumes of revolution around the x-axis, unit 6.2. So for this we're looking essentially at a 2D shape that is then rotated 360 degrees around the x-axis. So you already know how to do your kind of integration between two points so you know you can take two points and you can find this area and what we're looking at is well what happens if you take this 2d shape and then you rotate it around the x-axis and you end up with a 3d shape and this would be my 3d shape so you know around the x-axis you can see that we've just taken this shape and just wrapped it right round in a circle and then it's created this 3D shape. And we know this cross-sectional kind of area which would just be one slice, one 2D slice within here. <clears throat> but now we've now got this whole 3D shape. Just very quickly, give it a quick shade in there. Okay, and what we're looking at today is how we find the volume of that 3D shape. Now, luckily, using radians, it's quite easy. So if we go between the two points A and B, which are still the same two points on my uh, line here, on my graph, my 3D one. So still the same two points, A and B, and it's very simple. So the volume... V for volume is given by pi y squared dx between our a and b. And that's in a revolution of 2 pi radians. So when this is rotated by 2 pi radians, we get this. Okay, now you don't need to worry about where this comes from. You just need to be able to use it. <clears throat> Most common thing that people forget is sometimes they forget the pi in the front or sometimes they think two pi radians, so I need a two pi in the front. But the, it is just a pi. And then the other thing that is often forgotten is this squared. So there's just a couple of things to look out for when you do these yourself. So here's our first example. We've got a region R is bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and the curve. So x-axis, y-axis, and then this curve. It's so then rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis, find the exact volume of the solid generated. So the first thing I need to do is I've got my value of A, which is going to be zero in this case, but I need this value here, my value of B. So to do that, I need to make Y equals zero because it's that curve. So 12 plus X minus X squared. And then let's make Y equal to zero as that is where it will meet the X axis. I'm actually gonna take everything to the other side so that I can solve it easier. And looking at this, we want a 3 and a 4, uh, plus 3 and negative 4. So x is minus 3 and x equals 4. So quite clearly, b must be my 4. Okay, because it's quite clear that this is in the positive x axis. Now that I know that, I can go ahead and calculate the volume. So the volume is pi multiplied by the integration of, now this is between um, 4 and 0, and it's y squared. So 12 plus x minus x squared squared dx. And to solve this, what I really want to do is expand this bracket, and then I'll be able to integrate each term individually. Thank you. 
And here we have the answer as an exact value. Now, it's also worth remembering that while you won't get any marks for only writing down an answer, you're working to go with it, you can use the integration button um, in your calculator. So, you know, you should know what it looks like, something like this. Okay, it's a numerical integration, so it only gives you a numerical answer, no working out of calculations, and you put the original value or the original equation in to the calculator. So if you put this bit in, leave the pi out until last, so you can multiply the answer by pi at the end, but uh, you can always use it then to quickly double check your answer in the exam. That's really what it's there for. So if you've done an integration, just pop the original one in, okay? A lot of people do make the mistake and pop in the integrated version, which would be down here. But pop the original one in, and you can pop this in in brackets and squared between four and zero, and it will give you this value here, this fraction. And then, of course, you just need to multiply it by the pi. So it's worth remembering that in an exam.